Hi, I'm attorney Greg Dell, and today I'm here with attorney Cesar Gavidia. How are you, Cesar? I'm well, Greg. How you doing? Good. Now, we've done hundreds of these videos, and we're always getting on, you know, going on tape and talking about what's going on because we have the opportunity to speak with thousands of potential claimants every year to know what the beat is out there in the disability insurance industry. And one of the trends that I've been seeing recently, which is, which is very concerning to me, is that I seem to see an uptick in the scrutiny from Unum on the higher dollar value claims. And I'm also seeing denials of people that have been on claim for long periods of time. And I'm talking like long, like 20 years, 10 years, seven years. These are periods of time where you would think, wow, that person has a chronic condition. They're not really getting better. So what changed now that you think that this person's going back to work? So when I talk about this higher level of scrutiny from Unum, and we see it from other companies, but in right. particular, the trend happens to be Unum, who someone in-house got fired up and said, let's start looking at all these claims. What is the additional scrutiny that you see that leads them to go to a denial? Yeah. So, Greg, you're right. I've seen the same thing. So. What happens usually in these types of cases, and it's not always the case that it may get changed to a new claim representative or you know a new claim re representative begins new looking at it or they assign it to someone, um, but that's usually what I've seen with Unum. Okay. Um, and I don't know you know what the reason may be that they're sending it to a particular person or having, re having it reopened or re-looked at after being paid for so long, but they're doing it. And what's happening there is that then they're saying, sending it to either an internal medical review or an external medical review through either a peer review doctor or an independent medical physician. And as we know, and we've talked about in past videos, that's usually a point where the claimant needs to get concerned. Okay, because most of these IME doctors, independent medical physicians, or these, and these peer review doctors are not necessarily there to find a reason why you're not able to work and perform your your own occupation right. or you know whatever at that stage you may be in any occupation but the point is is that they're not there to determine that look you're not able to work right. they're there to find a reason why your the limitations and restrictions your doctors have have uh, imposed are not reasonable or they're not supported by the medical evidence and after a claim is being paid for so long you know and we've seen it. There's a certain degree of complacency in the claim. The claimant may not be so concerned. Oh, I've been getting paid for 10, 12 years or however long. And, you know, I fill out my claim forms the same way every month without thinking twice. Or the doctor, as you know, you know, will fill out the claim form the same way every, oh, look at my previous form right. or look at my, my medical records. Right. And the ambiguity in these forms and in the reporting is what gives Unum the ability to say, okay, we're done with you. Okay, we're not going to continue paying this or we have questions and we're going to scrutinize this further. And that's what I've seen. What, what I'm also seeing is going, since you were just talking about the doctors, is the in-house doctor from Unum or their medical consultant, whoever it may be, will send a letter directly to the treating physician saying, do you think the claimant is still impaired? Um, if so, what are the restrictions, limitations, or why? And the doctor writes back a response like, yes, I still think they're impaired. And that's, that's basically that's it. it. Or what I see more often than not is the doctor doesn't even respond. And right. Unum interprets that to mean, well, your doctor still doesn't think you're disabled, so sure. we're just going to cut you off. Right. And those letters are very one-sided. Again, they're, they're drafted with ambiguity. And the, the claimants get the, they get the bad side of the stick on that. Right. I mean, they really can get screwed. So I know what we try to do is tell Unum, please go through our office for all of those communications. You don't have the permission to go to the doctor directly and send some secret letter and try to get the doctor to write something that you can hang your hat on. Because very often the doctors don't even fill those letters out. It's a nurse practitioner or a PA or somebody who's filling in for sure. the day. And the claimant gets screwed. And it's a real pain to try right. to undo that and, and create tremendous financial right. heartache. And then we hear the frustration from the client, but but my doctor said this before, or my doctor corrected that. Well, the bell's already been rung, and now it's a problem. Right. Um, the other thing is, is that a lot of clients and claimants who've been on claim for a long th time think that they're immune from surveillance. Right. And on the contrary, you know, this is usually when, when your guard is down is usually when you're most susceptible 
to surveillance because you've been accustomed to doing things a certain way. You know, you don't think about it twice. You don't even think about putting it on your claim forms. You know, for instance, right. you might be, you know, participating in some sort of uh, athletic league or softball league or baseball or something like that, where you don't think it's a big deal because, you know, it doesn't require manual dexterity or, right. you know, you could, you know, you have somebody else running the bases for you or something like that. Um, but it's a problem because you're not reporting it. And then they're going to start asking you about it. And then you're going to get freaked out about it and think and be apprehensive about how you answer their questions when they start asking you about it. And then you're going to get placed in a very bad position. Right. So you need to be always in tune with what's going on. You have to be aware that they may cut you off at any time for any reason. And this is now your full-time job is maintaining your disability and making sure that what's being represented is the truth and everything is consistent. Right, you can never let your guard down is the point. But also, you know, some claimants feel like, well, I, I, I can't tell Unum that or I can't tell my doctor that because they're going to cut me off. You're worse off lying to them and them catching you than just saying, oh, I played one round of golf, but then I was in bed for three days, or I worked in the garden for a Saturday, or I mowed the lawn once, but Unum didn't know what you did for the next three days or how many pain pills you took before or after. So just be candid, you sure. know, in, in, in what you're saying to Unum, and this will most likely keep you out of trouble. The, the last thing just to mention here is that a lot of claimants get complacent because like you said, they think, oh, I'm turning in a form twice a year or three times a year or once a year, and therefore they're not gonna cut me off. And then they went from going to the doctor, you know, every two months to once a year. Well, I don't care if your doctor says they only need to see you once a year, you need to go every two to three months because Unum will or any disability care will chew you up on treatment that's only one time a year. It's just right. not gonna cut it. They're gonna say it's not reasonable care and that's gonna be a big problem. And I'm sure you've seen that right. many and times. We, and, and we argue till we're blue in the face, but, th but this is a progressive condition and right. it's not expected to get better. And we, we, because the claimants don't you know, understand sometimes, we are saying what they're saying, what their doctors are right. saying, but sometimes it's just not good enough to get over that heavy burden of proof you're gonna have trying to prove your case in court. Right, and then they say, well, it must not be that bad, you only went to the doctor once. Right. Well, the person's been living with the condition for six, seven years, well, what is the doctor gonna tell them they don't already know? And unless there's some miracle drug to make them feel better, nothing's changing. So, so this is the latest trend with Unum that we're seeing. If you have any issues with Unum or any disability carrier, feel free to call any of our attorneys. We're happy to provide you with a free consultation and we'll let you know right away whether or not we can assist you.